There's no doubt about the benefits of diet when it comes to constipation. One, causing it, and two, fixing it. And there's a huge amount of research out there, literally thousands of studies, so I haven't read them all, but I've read lots of them. And they show that fruit, nuts, and seeds overwhelmingly are foods that should be added in terms of reducing the risk of constipation and, of course, in terms of ameliorating it too. And some people will probably say, but what about nuts? What about peanuts? Uh, are they a problem? Well, the, the, so I checked it out, and peanut butter does not contribute to constipation. It does the exact opposite. Like the other nuts and seeds and legumes and so on, um, they're rich in fiber, rich in nutrients, minerals, vitamins, and so on, as well as a group of chemicals called polyphenols that all help reduce the risk and improve constipation, okay? So there's there's enough research on that. Then it comes down to fiber, and the research shows overwhelmingly, again, that fiber um, is an important part of a diet to make sure that you reduce the risk of constipation. Is it the only solution to constipation? No, it's not. And there are some myths out there. Some, some studies were done which were extreme cases of giving people extreme fiber and extreme cases of constipation and they didn't work because they were probably set up to fail. Uh, at the end of the day, 99% of the studies show fiber is a part of the constipation solution. And um, uh, the best one is soluble fiber. And in terms of the treatment, it comes down to what are the butyrate uh, butyrate is what's called a short chain fatty acid. And when the fiber is fermented in the gut with the good muck gut microbiome, which I'll talk about in a moment, they produce these short chain fatty acids and butyrate is one of the main ones. And that's been shown to actually be anti-constipatory. So what that what we want is for them to be, uh, the fiber to be fermented by the gut microbiome to produce the butyrate to actually get everything working again because that's what it does it actually starts getting things working down there so butyrate producing insoluble uh, soluble fiber and then we go on to water and I've already stated that for most people water is not a critical issue the amount of water but there's a large number of studies out there showing that magnesium water magnesium sulfate, magnesium oxide. These are studies that have been done uh, in large groups of people and they've just given them water over a period of um, four or 12 weeks and the improvement rate has been significant, not necessarily huge, but every single person virtually improved and some people improved dramatically. Because they do averages, it's pretty hard to tell, but we know that magnesium water, uh, and the reason is one, because it brings water back, uh, the magnesium brings water back into the uh, large intestine and makes uh, the, the poops and so on a little bit softer and easier to get out. But in addition, magnesium is a muscle relaxant. And when you've got tight muscles down there that aren't working properly, well, it works on that. I'm a, I'm a big fan of magnesium and bicarbonate. I actually have it a little bit of that every morning, especially when I go to the gym. So magnesium sulfate in the studies, magnesium oxide in the studies, um, in the water, uh, mineral and alkaline water. So they, they've done a couple of tests or experiments with people where they're given a mineral alkaline water from the shops. Yeah, not soda water, not mineral water. Mineral it has to have a pH of around about eight. And it had 2.6 milligrams per litre of um, uh, alkalinity and so on or, or minerals in there. Uh, yellow tea shows up. Yellow tea is a special Chinese tea. You can get it online. I've checked you can get it online. Now, the research also shows that green tea uh, is beneficial for it. Although there are no studies, all of the Japanese studies I've read, about 10 of them, show that green tea consumption is associated with reducing constipation. So we've got yellow tea and try some green tea. Then we get on to vitamins that we can add in. And the top one that shows up is vitamin D. This is a fat soluble one. If you're having gut issues, then absorbing your fat soluble ones in your diet is probably going to be a little bit harder. And I explain that in some of my other videos. So please look at my other videos on gut health. Subscribe below. Check out my other videos that I've got on this. Vitamin D, absolutely supplement with vitamin D. Um, there, there's probably 30 or 40 studies that I had a look at uh, briefly for, for that matter, but they all show the vitamin D deficiency. None of them showed about supplementing with vitamin and constipation, just the fact that people with constipation have significantly lower levels of vitamin D. Vitamin Bs, this is the B complex, vitamin B1, B2, B3, 5, uh, 6, 12, and so on, uh, has been shown to 
One, be low in people with constipation. Two, be beneficial. Now, both of these are very important for the immune system. B vitamins are really important for the nervous system and muscle function. And remember, I've talked about the importance of muscle function and nerve function, getting that all working again. So B vitamins are really, really critical. A good supplement with a B multivitamin and vitamin C. Vitamin C, um, a lot of people say, well, take vitamin C. It'll cause constipation only if you take large doses, 20, 30, 40 milligrams of vitamin C. And it will help there. It's called bowel tolerance level. If it gets through to the bowel and there's too much of it, your body hasn't absorbed it. Um, but where it really comes into play is that it stops the oxidation and inflammation in the gut itself. And uh, all of these three have been shown to be beneficial for the gut microbiome as well. So it's a win-win situation. And I take three grams of vitamin C a day. I get sick, I take 20 grams a day. So vitamin C is extremely safe. Uh, when it comes to minerals, the overwhelming minerals, mineral in the studies is um, magnesium. Magnesium, magnesium, magnesium. And again, it probably helps in terms of the water. So you can mix, mix, mix a magnesium powder in water uh, and or have it as a capsule or a tablet. Now, I probably wouldn't recommend a tablet for obvious reasons that digestion may not be working properly down there, but a powder. Multivitamin is, is uh, sorry, a multi-mineral is absolutely essential because there are so many minerals there involved zinc and uh, uh um, selenium and boron are all involved in all of the muscle and nerve tone and so on. And we want to rebuild that nerve tone. So a multivitamin. Uh, people, um, calcium and iron generally show up. I've written them in black with a little asterisk there to highlight. They're the ones that you should not be supplementing with because they are linked with causing constipation. Um, one of the factors in there. So uh, uh, try to avoid calcium and iron. And then finally down here is one of my, one of my favorites. This is cool ursetin. That's a funny, it looks like casetin when you put it up there, but it's coercetin. And you can get this online again, and uh, or, or at the, your local health food store. And coercetin has so many benefits throughout the body, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and so on. And there's about a dozen studies I found specifically to do with coercetin and reducing uh, constipation. And again, it, can come, it comes as a capsule, um, really easy to take, and to add to the regime. So the critical thing is you, you're now confronted with this, which ones, what do I do? How do I do about it? Well, I always prefer people to take a stepwise approach to it, start adding some of these in, the vitamins and minerals, you know, absolutely essential. Try the magnesium water, that's simple to do. The coercetin, absolutely try it, okay? Uh, all of these have so many benefits in the body that uh, overwhelming benefits, you know, uh, across the board in terms of health and well-being. By the way, um, high, high levels of coercion you find in uh, onions and garlic and so on. So there's something else you can add in there. Uh, when it comes to specific foods that show up in the research, um, probably the king are uh, the first three or four of these and rhubarb. And rhubarb shows lots of benefits. In, in fact, rhubarb shows uh, as the food, as a, as a paste, as a drink, uh, as an extract and as a, a, a treatment, a paste on the actual navel area. So one study that I found, um, literally put it on the stomach area. And this is probably great for kids, because you know, if, they're, if they don't want to eat something, they're a, bit, a little bit finicky about it and worried about it, um, putting some um, a rhubarb paste. And again, that study just made it as a bit of a poultice in there, put it on there and it, it, it significantly improved constipation symptoms. So rhubarb has shown up multiple studies, really simple. Um, kiwi fruit shows up in dozens of studies and that's two to three kiwi fruit a day. And when you look at um, kiwi fruit, it's uh, same with rhubarb though, you know, it's got so many things in there. It's fiber, vitamin C, vitamin B, potassium, and it's got some another one called actinidin. And actinidin has, is a great enzyme for digesting, but also seems to trigger the movement in the bowel. So in some cases, you can almost, I think you can get that as a supplement now. And it's in some products, which is absolutely great. But kiwi fig, two to, two to three kiwi fruit a day. Fig, um, and they've done figs, fig paste, a whole raft of those things as well. Um, simple, easy. And you're thinking, well, how do I do all these? Well, that's up to you, but it's really about, you can mix some of these things together in a smoothie. Yeah, I don't have many taste buds, so it's up to your taste sensation and so on. But all of these here, 
improve the gut microbiome, decrease inflammation, decrease oxidation, improve the nervous system, and improve and rebalance the hormones which are communicating with the nervous system and work on getting things down. Then we get to prune juice. Um, and here in the studies, they were talking about 50 grams of prune juice a day. Uh, and, and so adding a couple of prunes or getting some prune juice, pretty simple, pretty easy to get at the supermarket. Mangoes, they were talking about third, 300 grams. Mangoes um, are again, another one of those. In fact, all of these help with all aspects of digestion from esophageal problems to reflux problems to SIBO, small, small intestinal problems, right through to constipation. That's what's so good about this, because again, constipation isn't just about being down there, it's a whole digestive system communicating. And so we've got mangoes, um, 300 grams of mangoes, that's, that's one um, big mango, great idea, I love mangoes. Lettuce has shown up on a couple of studies, aloe vera, um, which you can get as a cream, a gel, or a, a liquid, and really simple to add. And I have a, a, a little swig of aloe vera every couple of days just for my overall gut health and well-being. Again, they help rebuild the gut microbiome. Uh, moringa is an unknown, but for the last five years, I've been telling people, moringa, moringa, you can grow it in your backyard. It grows virtually everywhere. Um, I don't do that well with it, but you can get it as a supplement. It's It's been shown to have so many benefits out there in the body. Uh, and there's a couple of papers showing that it helps with constipation because of the high density of nutrients in it. It's really nutrient dense. Um, and, and lots of little chemicals, phytochemicals in there that help. Uh, flaxseed, 50 grams of flaxseed study help, had so many benefits. One, flaxseed has a really good fiber in there, always ground up. The studies with whole flaxseed did not work. The studies with ground up flaxseed or a flaxseed paste, something like that, did work. So a fiber, it's got lots of fiber. Uh, it's also estrogenic. So for women, remember, women have around about twice the rates of constipation as men. It's a great one for helping rebalance that. It's called a phytoestrogen, and it counteracts some of those other negative aspects of estrogen. So the phytoestrogen in flaxseed um, has been shown to have lots of benefits for women, um, particularly in postmenopausal, menopausal times. But here we see it helping with constipation um, and it's got a whole raft of cholinogenic um, materials in it that help with the nervous system as well. So it's a win-win-win situation. Flaxseed, 50 grams, slippery elm, you can get as a supplement. Mulberry fruit has shown up in a couple of studies. So again, it's about just consuming more fruit. There are probably lots of other fruits out there, and there are some that I didn't know what they were, so I didn't put them up from uh, various parts of the world. So just more fruits. And finally, I want to mention Chinese herbal medicine. Chinese herbal medicine is um, a kind of like a combination of things that used over thousands of years, some of it 4,000 years, and it's worked. So if you can find a recipe, a remedy, a treatment, a, you know, um, a good Chinese medicine, medicine herbalist, fantastic. I have one here in Fremantle. And my message is, these are a combination of usually a half a dozen to a dozen ingredients. They will often include things like rhubarb, plant, fig, um, aloe. They've got a combination of these things already prepared if you don't want to prepare. Now, there are some supplements on the market that have a few of these in combination, and I'll talk about one of those a little bit later. But at the moment, how can you build some of these into your diet, not just for getting over a bowel constipation, but making sure that it no longer occurs? The next stage is speeding up the whole process. And that really involves working with the gut and the gut microbiome. And the best way to kickstart that, other than already doing, is with probiotics and prebiotics. So what we know about probiotics, okay, there is no doubt that they help with constipation. Now, when they do the big, what are called meta-analysis of the studies, it shows up, oh, hold on, it, that's not 100% effective. Why? Because they use different varieties, different strains, they use different concentrations, they do different lengths, and of course, it's never going to show up. But the majority of studies clearly show a benefit of taking probiotics and looking after your gut microbiome on a regular basis. And I'm talking daily, daily. I take probiotics pretty well every second day, one way or another. And so what we've got are the probiotics. And the probiotics that show up in the research, the work, are the fairly common ones. 
and there's about 40 or 50, and I didn't want to put them up here, but they're the major strains that you will find in your probiotics. And it shows, at the end of the day, it's the concentration, the number of them that counts the most. And it's Bifidobacterium and Lactobacillus, which are the two that you find most commonly in your yogurts. So, but they, do they have enough probiotics in them? No, supplement, if you're gonna have yogurt, Supplement, put some extra probiotics in them, or take the probiotic capsules and so on. And then another one on the on the on, literally in the in the ball game is one called Bacillus coagulin. It's a totally different one. And then you've got another one which is not even a bacteria; it's a mold. Now this one has an advantage over the other ones, especially if you've been on antibiotics and other things like that, in that it's not affected by the antibiotics and other conditions. So look for one that's got Saccharomyces as well. And now when you've got probiotics, the probiotics on their own, I think are great, but if you wanna make them much, much greater, you add them with things that are going to feed them. And these are the prebiotics. Prebiotics are literally the foods, you would probably best know them as fibers that feed the probiotics so that when they get down there, there's food for them and then they can multiply. They multiply every 20 minutes or so on, so you wanna provide them with the food to multiply. And when they do that, they start to kick out the baddies and the, what, what we call the opportunistic species that are poisoning your gut, literally. And then they create an environment for all the other good ones to come back, not just themselves, but for all the other good ones. Now, I've also got in here something called phytobiotics. And these are the big molecules. I've already shown you some already. These are the big molecules that you get in all of the fruits, veggies, nuts, herbs, and spices. So all those things I've told you about, the rhubarb, the fig, all those, one of the ways, the major actions that they have is that they feed the gut microbiome as well, and they're called phytobiotics. Now, when you add prebiotics and probiotics, you end up with something called symbiotics, and symbiotic is what you're really after. That's when you've got the, the probiotics with the food, and literally, it, it sustains the growth and helps repair and then you're looking for something that's been shown. My favorite, simple, easiest, cost-effective is one called K-Fiber because it has the um, phytobiotics, the actinidin, which is the one from the kiwi fruit. It's also got lots of other nutrients in it. So it's a complete gut food. And on top of that, it's got bacillus coagulin. So it's a win-win-win situation. It's providing everything that the gut needs to do the repair. Now, is it gonna suit everyone? Maybe not, it doesn't matter. What you've got though is a list of all the other things I put up which you will try in addition to this. But what you're looking for are some of these mixed with some prebiotics and synbiotics. Now, the next question is what about fermented foods? Well, the research is a little bit sparse on fermented foods and, and uh, constipation. However, it does show that kefir and fermented foods in general are good for constipation, reducing constipation. So adding any fermented foods in there, um, whether it's a sauerkraut, whether it's a, a miso, soya sauce, all of those things are being fermented and they have the right molecules in there to feed the bacteria and the bacteria as well. Um, vinegar, for example, which is, I'm a big advocate of it. I'd really suggest you watch my little video um, on vinegar because it explains why it's so good consumed with a meal. And then you've got another one that's uh, <clears throat> literally come out, and this is in the last 10 years, fecal transplant. Now, they've got a, another one, literally the, a microbiome transplant, that's a, a new term for it. And uh, this, this is literally taking good bacteria and gut microbiome from a healthy person, cleaning it up, getting rid of all the potential nasty ones, because there's uh, about a thousand different species and varieties in there, and putting it in. And while I'm not a big advocate of it yet, the research shows that it works with severe constipation and other gut-related conditions. So it is a bit of a win. I prefer feeding it from the down rather than the, the bottom up, although they do have capsules with it now. So this is a rundown. Now, why we need this, apart from the fact that it, it's going to re-inoculate the gut, the biggest problem we have in the gut with with constipation and many other issues is linked to gut dysbiosis, the imbalance of the microbiome. Please check my gut videos out. Um, this is the kickstart here. The rest is to keep you going. There is so much information on those videos um, that are in my channel. And so you've got gut dysbiosis, the imbalance of them, and 
all of that, they, that leads to uh, uh, inflammation and oxidation in the lung, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidney, hormones, leaky gut, reflux, and your, bra your, bra your gut brain axis. Uh, and that's your nervous system. Now, clearly, what I've already been telling you is that this stuff all plays a key part in constipation, all of it. So this dysbiosis is contributing to it. The brain nervous system, the vagus nerve, which carries all the messages down literally from the brain to the gut to coordinate the movement and many other things, release of um, uh, enzymes and hydrochloric acid and all those other, and bile and all those other things in there, rely on the vagus nerve and what's called the parasympathetic nervous system associated with it. So they work hand in hand. So if we've got dysbiosis, this is not working. None of these are working properly. And as a result, we've got constipation. The great thing is already what I've shown you in all the other sections to do with those great foods and things and supplements work on rebuilding this. And so the pro probiotics and prebiotics and so on, because they're anti-inflammatory and they're anti-oxidation. Now, by improving these, you increase gut motility. And as a result of that, you improve constipation. There is no doubt about it, but it's not taking one thing and saying, I'm going to do this one thing. If you've got serious constipation, you want to build in a formula, which I'll show you in a moment, of multiple things that you can do realistically and say, this is what I'm going to set down to do and this is what I'm going to do on a regular basis from now on. The next stage is digestive support. And these are things that don't show up in the research on constipation, but show up in the research on gut health, all aspects from um, uh, literally stomach acid, uh, reflux, GERD, small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, and so on. So I actually recommend it as a, a guideline because our stomach acid is generally too low. And if that's low, then it's not sending the messages down the rest of the way, small intestine, large intestine, to actually work again. And I'd really suggest you look at my videos on reflux and SIBO because they talk about the communication that goes on all the way up and down. And so hydrochloric acid is critical for that communication. It sets it all off. And these are just supplements that you can get online or from your local health food store. Pancreatic enzymes, I think, are a must. Uh, there's a very simple reason. If it's not digested, it's fermented. And the fermentation is what causes a lot of the gut problems and the toxins and the poisons down with constipation. So we want to actually get some, a little bit more digestion. And that also starts to send messages that things are working. Bile salts and bile, particularly if you've got any um, uh, gallbladder type issues, gallbladder remove, an absolute uh, must in here. And, and bile is one of the another one of those communicating molecules it doesn't just emulsify the fat and help with digestion and increase your vitamin d a d e k and all those uh it, it actually helps communicate and get all that information going back down apple cider vinegar is a great old-fashioned remedy that i i'm constantly telling people just add it have it in with a meal have it a little bit before a meal and i've got a whole again another video just on apple cider vinegar and the benefits of it uh, essential oils are fantastic. I love them. I live with essential oils. Uh, I've been doing essential oils for almost 50 years now. Um, and in terms of uh, constipation, these ones show up in the research. Peppermint and lavender, lemon and rosemary. Uh, the first three are the ones that show up the most, but in terms of aromatherapy, but in particular, massage. So if you're doing massage on the belly, I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and then there's a proprietary brand by a company called Young Living. No, I don't derive an income from them. Uh, I don't derive an income from any of this. This is what my passion is to get this message out. So Digize is a proprietary brand we actually use that's got a, a combination already. And uh, again, we use it throughout the family for any like, like gut issues. Uh, natural sweetener, xylitol. Xylitol actually shows up because we can't use the sugar anymore. That's a no-no. We can't use the artificial sweeteners that they put in all the soft drinks and so on. Xylitol shows up as a benefit for the gut microbiome and constipation. So it's a little bit of a win-win situation. And you can get that from, I'm pretty sure you can get that from most of the supermarkets and so on. And then we've got stress reduction. 
there is the gut brain access everybody knows it and when that's not working down there it's sending messages up there and it's sending other messages back down now we want to get that working from both ends and with the foods and everything else we're getting that happening down there we want to get this part going we want to get rid of the stress stress is a major player in constipation and in, for that matter lots of gut issues it may have started off with reflux and other uh, small intestinal problems but it is something that we need to manage. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm good with stress. I'm sorry, most people aren't. We need to do things. Deep breathing, I've already mentioned, in terms of being grateful, helping move through. There's research on that in, for constipation. Yoga, there's research on the benefits of yoga for constipation. Meditation, hypnosis, I couldn't find any, but I'm a big believer in both of those. And so it's a great way. Now, hypnosis shows up extensively for IBS and IBD inflammatory bowel disease and uh, irritable bowel syndrome. So I would suggest you look at hypnosis to, again, work on the mind so that the mind can then work on the rest of the digestive system and get that feedback loop going. Physical therapy is a must. And without any doubt, there's, um, there's research on our physical manipulation of that area, in particular, your, what's called your visceral area your, around all your organs down here. Uh, and I've been to a visceral osteopath just to experience what they do. And I thought it was fantastic in terms of, you know, feeling it out and seeing what is working and what's not working down there. Um, of chiropractic physiotherapy shows up in the research, um, particularly to do with pelvic floor muscles. And again, as I said, the visceral area in here. And the research suggests that anything that's working though, that area is going to be of benefit. And then you've got massage, which is an obvious one that, that works out, particularly with the essential oils and physical activities. And all physical activity is a benefit, but ones that are going to get that area going down there. And so doing squats and right down, you can hold a bar, go all the way down. I'm going to disappear off the screen here and you go all the way down. I'm a big believer in squats. They're my favorite exercise, not for constipation, just for health and well-being. And so if you can get in a squat position, there's one study I found on that and it wasn't fantastic, but it did show it had some benefits. And there are obvious reasons why it might uh, work for you. So again, it's about combining all of these issues. I've given you a huge amount of information and clearly you're not gonna go out and do all those 40 things I've just mentioned. Um, in fact, you've probably tried 10 or 20 of them already. What it's about is just adding on these things to the things you're not doing. I would, without doubt, suggest you go and start with the supplements, the, the B vitamins and D vitamin and C and get that going straight away. That's a, that's a for me, a no brainer. Then it's all the other things that you can add in, the, the food, um, the rhubarb, the thing, mix it in. And I have already experimented and I will put up on my other little YouTube channel, uh, making up a, a constipation, a couple of literal recipes for constipation using some of those things. So that will be up on my, I've got another little social media um, uh, YouTube channel with that. And I'll try some of those recipes out and get that out there for you as well. Uh, so you've got a lot of information. What do you choose? There's whatever bits you want, add on and just keep adding on. And I really believe this will work for you, but it's about understanding the whole process of it. It's not about just one miracle magic bullet. It doesn't work like that. It's about, and once you've got it going, then you need the rest of the body to keep going with you. It, this is a lifetime journey. I believe it's a lifetime journey for all of us in terms of looking after our gut health. Please subscribe to the video below, like it, share it with your friends, because it'd be great if we got this information out there. Good luck.